All right, welcome everybody. Tutorial Tuesday. I have been getting a few requests for Mayurasana, for peacock pose. Um, peacock pose is a really fun arm balance, but it's also a really difficult arm balance. Um, mostly because even though arm, most arm balances are, you gotta find the balancing point that works in your body. This one I feel like really is um, based off of your anatomy. So there's a lot of variations, a lot of variables that can come into play. Do you have a long torso? Do you have a short torso? Do you have long legs? Do you have short legs? Do you have a long torso with short legs or do you have a short torso with long legs, right? So there's a lot of, you have to kind of experience and trial and error on your own. Um, with the hands, right, real quick with the hands, traditionally, fingertips taught turn back. Not necessary. Right? Actually, I think more people are going to find it more comfortable with the hands actually turned outwards. Right? Because this, this kind of this flexion in the wrist, right, creates um, a lot of issues for a lot of people. And it's just not very comfortable. A lot of people don't have a lot of mobility in there. So by turning the fingertips back, right, it's either sharp shooting pain or they're just not able to get the motion in the wrist that they need. So turning out the hands is a totally fine thing to do. Another thing is about how close should my elbows be versus how wide they should be. I'm gonna say it's just gonna depend on you and what you have um, going for you, right? Taking the elbows a little bit wider, right? Allows you to find a little bit more, and we'll play with this in a second, chaturanga style shoulder blades together down your back. And by doing that, it creates a lift of the chest. By bringing the elbows in towards each other, right, what that does is it provides a little bit better of a shelf to balance on. So again, playing with elbows closer together, elbows wider, right? If you have stuff you got to get under, right, get underneath it, right? Um, and then another thing about it is where do I place my elbows, right? And this is where, again, it's playing with it. It's if you have longer legs, you may want your elbows down closer by your pelvis. If you have a longer torso, you may want them up a little bit higher towards the chest. If you're like me and you're kind of cut right in half, maybe right by the belly button, but anywhere from ribs or chest down to hips is a perfectly fine way to do it. What you're trying to do is find a half of your weight forward, half of your weight back, right? Um, and then the last, the biggest key to all of this is the back body creates the lift. No matter how much pressing into your hands you're gonna do, you will not lift up unless you have good, strong engagement of your posterior chain. So of your back body, the back body creates the lift. And the way we can experience that is come down onto your belly, come all the way down, bring your forehead to the floor and take your hands back by your lower ribs, right? Fingertips can be back or turned out, right? Doesn't matter. But what I want you to do is keep your forehead down just for a second. And then I want you to press into your hands as much as you can to try to lift your body off the floor. So just keep pressing into your hands, right? Seeing if you can lift your body by all you're doing is pressing down in your, hand, your hands. If your body is lifting, you're cheating. I'm gonna tell you that right now. You are cheating. You cannot press into your hands so much that your body lifts, right? So what I want you to do, take a breath in, and then on your exhale, loop your shoulders back, squeeze your elbows, lift the back of your ribs up toward the ceiling. Right, and that, feel that lift to the chest, right? Shoulder blades together down your back. And then from the back of your legs, so your hamstrings and your glutes, try to lift your legs off the floor. So think locust pose with peacock arms, right? Shoulder blades together down your back. Feel all of this lift. This has nothing to do with you in your hands. But to add a little bit more, press into your hands, pull your elbows backwards. So you feel the back of your arms engage. And then lower all the way down. Just so we can experience it one more time. Right, shoulders loop back, shoulder blades down the back. Lift from the back of your ribs up. So feel your chest lift. And then lift your legs, engage the quads, right? Engage the quads, spread the toes. And then lower all the way down, come back up to your knees. Right, so you can see, doesn't matter how much I press into my hands, I need to fire the back body up. So the arms, so understand the arms to stabilize us, the peacock shoulders, 
is bring your elbows together, forearms together, pinky fingers together. So you're like this. And then pull your hands apart, keep your elbows towards each other. So this is peacock arms, right? And you're gonna feel as we do this, what muscles need to be strong. You need the back and the outside of the shoulders, right? That's gonna help us stay in the arm balance. Right, to support our arm balance. But we know this isn't going to lift us, right? This won't lift us. Draw your shoulder blades together, take your arms wide. This action, just like we did in, in our locust, our peacock version of locust we just did on the floor, shoulder blades together. Feel that, right? That's what we need. So we're gonna look like this, but we want to also act like this. So as we come into it, we're going to be here, but all I'm going to try to do is draw my shoulder blades together. You're going to see, they're not going to draw towards each other. But as you do this, you're going to feel those muscles just kind of lift your chest just a little bit. That keeps your chest, keeps your chin, keeps your nose, keeps your face off the floor in Peacock. Right? Now, where do I place my hands? Right? Do I place them in line with my elbows? Do I take them a little bit further forward? Do I take my wrists a little bit further back than my knees? Again, that's going to play with your proportions of torso and legs. Right? You're going to have to play with it. My wife has really long legs. Her peacock is down here. Her hands are closer to her knees, maybe a little bit back. Right? I know really short people have to be with short legs have to be up a little bit higher to support their torso. The majority of their weight is here. If the majority of your weight is down here, you need the hands and the elbows a little bit further back. Right? And the easiest way to get into it, right? There's lots of ways to get in. I'm just going to show in this tutorial one way to get into this. And it's like you're coming into camel, Ustrasana. The reason I think this is the easiest way to get into it is the hips stay higher than the shoulders, so the butt stays up. If the butt drops too low, you drop too low, right? So to get kind of that underneath action and that kind of squeezing in, I want you just to take your arms wide and then wrap your elbows in. Again, fingers can be back or to the side. Play around with that. And then from here, I'm not going to look straight down. I'm gonna look as far forward as possible. I'm not even gonna look at my hands. I'm just gonna set my hands down. Well, maybe you wanna look at your hands just to see where you're placing them first. Right, I've just done this enough so I know, I know kind of where I need to place it. But I'm just gonna set my hands down and then I'm gonna just kind of tilt my tailbone up toward this end. You can kind of see that, right? Think uh, cow pose, right? If you came into cow pose here, right, and cat pose here, cow pose here, where you're kind of tilting your tailbone up toward the ceiling, maintain that. That's gonna keep the butt up in the air, right? If the butt is lifted, you are lifted. The butt drops, you drop, right? So elbows in, right? Fingertips back to the side, doesn't matter. Chest forward, keep the big toes together. Lean forward and then engage the back body to find the lift. Shoulder blades draw towards each other and then come all the way down. And as you can see, I did not straighten my legs out. Why did I not straighten my legs out? Because that adds in just a little bit more coordination, more strength, and just more demand for the pose. So until you are comfortable in this posture, I would say don't even worry about straightening the legs. Just keep kind of child's pose legs, big toes touch, knees wide. What I've seen work for a, a few people, a few females that I've seen, is as they come down, instead of just all of a sudden rotating the hips up and being able to lift the knees off the floor and feet off the floor, they actually draw their knees a little bit forward. So I'll show that real quick, right? I'll see if I can do it. Right, so again, I set up like I would for child's pose with my big toes together. Keep, what that does is by taking the knees wide, big toes together, brings the center of gravity in more. And then, right, take this big kind of circle your arms out, elbows in, lean forward, look forward. And then what they do is they just kind of scoot the knees forward and then they lift up, right? And by scooting the knees forward, you can see, right? It's, it creates a little bit too much momentum for me right now. But it takes the knees forward and gets the feet off the floor. And then they're able to work their back body to get the hips up, right? So that is an option, right? So what they do, again, as they come into it is they just scoot the knees forward and you can see my body is lifted. And then they work the tailbone, the back body into locust pose, right? So that's pretty much it, right? It, it's trial and error. It's figuring, do elbows need to be down? Here, do they need to be higher? Do they need to be in more? Do they need to be out more? Do my hands need to be turned out, turned back? And then it's, right, we need to fire 
the back body up as much as we can. All right, I wanna show it one time with the legs straight. So from start to finish, so where you can go. But to understand where the leg, how the leg stays straight, come into Sphinx pose. Right, come into Sphinx. And then lift your, let's go right leg, right leg off the floor. Right now as you lift it up higher, you're gonna feel your knee start to bend because the hamstrings roll again is to bend the knee. The quads roll is to straighten the leg. So as you lift up, what I also want you to do is engage your right quad as much as you can. Keep the leg straight, lift your right leg up toward the ceiling. That's how you straighten out your leg in Peacock. So you go from this position, bend the knee, lift the foot up, and then engage your quad and continue to lift the leg up. Right, you feel that? Good. Let's do it on the left side. Right, back of the hamstring lifts up, spread your toes, and then lift up a little bit higher so you kind of feel that knee bend. Now engage your left quad. Right, to feel the, what you need to do from Peacock, bend your left knee, lift your left foot up toward the ceiling. Right, this is the action when the big toes are together. Now engage your quad, keep the knee lifted, straighten out the leg. That's what it takes, but you need to maintain the leg lift because you're adding more leverage. So if the leg drops, the butt drops. And when the butt drops, you drop, right? So it's, we're gonna enter it the same exact way. All right, so I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna sit tall in my Ustrasana. I'm gonna get my elbows down, I'm gonna look forward. And as I look forward, tilt my tailbone up, come here, and then I engage the quads, straighten out the legs. Maybe the chin comes down for a minute, but then I draw my shoulder blades together and then lift the chest, right? Legs are hard, right? especially when you're first learning because it spreads out center of gravity and it means you have all this weight up here that you got to maintain but it normally drops so the key is go slow get comfortable with those kind of child's pose or diamond shaped legs right once you're comfortable there then work ex extending the leg straight don't worry about straightening the legs until you are comfortable balancing in peacock with the feet together with the big toes together right try all this out let me know what you think See you next time.